For Criminal Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today to unpack the DA manifesto ahead of 2021 local government elections is DA leader John Steenhazen. So, John, do you think that the DA will do better in this year's local government elections compared to the previous elections in 2016? Well, look, I think it's going to be very difficult uh, to match that performance because we were living in a different political universe then. We had the Stop Zuma campaign at its mm. height. Uh, the ANC was in disarray because of the Zuma mm -hmm. faction and the corruption and the Gupta story had started to break. Mm. So, you know, there was a big stay away from ANC voters in that last election. Mm. Uh, we're hoping that the internal uh, climate within the ANC is going to render the same result, but it can't be guaranteed. We're living with a different president, Ramaphosa, mm. as opposed to Zuma. Yeah. But I think the DA is a lot more positive in this election than we've been before, and I think we've been better at showing people our offer uh, rather than just bashing other parties or bashing the ANC, we've been putting on the table in this election our alternatives mm. and backing it up with evidence about where we govern, we get things done, mm. whether it's uh, employment, whether it's uh, eng uh, engineering of mm. services, whether it's uh, infrastructure, whether it's schooling, we, we get things done where we govern and that's why the top five municipalities all governed by the DA. Mm. And it will be interesting to ask again, John, that will you again uh, consider entering coalitions with other parties in order to gain uh, power in certain cities, mm. metros or districts? Yo, thanks. That's a great question. Mm. So we're going full out to try and get our own majorities mm. in as many municipalities as possible. Why is that important? It's important because when you're able to govern with your own majority, you can get things done much quicker. Mm. Cape Town, we first got in there with the seven-party coalition. We were able to convince people to give us our own majority, and that's really when Cape Town took off and mm -hmm. became the best-run metro now in the country. So we're going out to have full control. But here's the thing. If we don't make it with 50%, we will look to do deals with other parties, mm -hmm. provided they share our core values and principles. Okay. What are those? Non-racialism respect for the rule of law and the constitution, mm. a capable state, and a market economy that sees business and the private sector as partners in growth. If we can agree on those four things and agree what our program of action based on those four things for the next five years would be, mm -hmm. we would do that. But we're not going to be jumping into bed with parties mm. that don't share those values and principles because we learned some very important lessons over the last five years. Mm, as we are talking, we are under stage two load shedding. Mm. Can you share your plan uh, to stop mm. load shedding? Well, I don't call it load shedding. I think that's like putting lipstick on the pig. It's job shedding because mm. that's what it is. When the sure. factories stop running, when businesses can no longer operate, mm. it sheds jobs from the economy. We've lost mm. three and a half million jobs alone uh, this year so far. Mm. Uh, you know, so we've got to prevent it. So there's a number of things we're doing. I've challenged DA municipalities and wherever we get into government, mm -hmm. we're going to push the envelope on allowing our municipalities to procure power directly from independent power producers okay. and to keep the lights on. We've spent the last five to six years begging national government to allow us to make plans to keep lights on. Mm -hmm. That's going to change in this next election. We're going to go out into that space, start doing it, and then force national government to come and say, we're going to stop you from keeping your factories running. We're going to stop you from keeping your lights on. And I don't think there's a court in the land that would fall on the side of mm. letting people lose their jobs, keeping people electricity scarce. Where we're in, in government in Cape Town, we've got the Steenbrus hydroelectric power plant, which yeah. already means that we miss out on a full stage of load shedding. So if it's stage one, there's no load shedding at all in Cape Town. Yeah. If there's uh, load shedding stage two, we only st uh, shed at stage one. So it's already helping. But six municipalities in the Western Cape in the next 10 years are going to be Eskom free. Wow. We're not going to sit back and wait for Pretoria to provide. Mm. Municipalities are going to have to get in there and insulate their cities from failing national government on things like electricity mm -hmm. because you can't build a local economy without a basic like electricity. Mm. Water as well mm. is another mm. issue and your party has promised to reduce water shedding. Mm. Can you share? That's yeah, well, so mm. we, you may know we were faced with a one in 100 year drought in the Western Cape and yes. the city of Cape Town. Mm. And we adopted the uh, defe uh, Defeat Day Zero campaign mm -hmm. and we put in place uh, uh, mechanisms to be able to ensure that the city didn't run out of water. The dams were sitting at 12%. Mm. There's something strange in Gauteng. The dams are sitting at 80% plus full, mm. but we've got water shedding. And it's because of the infrastructure, Rand Water, 
municipal infrastructure mm. and load shedding all having an impact. Pipes are bursting, they're mm. not being replaced. Mm. Millions of litres of water are being lost every single day. So there's something fundamentally wrong with the infrastructure de development here in Joburg. Mm. And it is because for the last 25 years, there's been very little money put aside to maintaining the infrastructure. So it's breaking, the pumps aren't working, and people are now sitting without water when there is lots of water there, water everywhere mm. in the dams. They just can't get it piped into the home. So we would focus on a massive infrastructure rollout. Even in Cape Town, we've got to expand our infrastructure, spend mm. money on putting those services in the ground so we don't have citizens running out of water. Mm. And you are now visiting one of the biggest economic hubs in our country. Mm. How are you planning to stimulate local economic development? Mm. Yeah. So I think that the model that a job of job creation National government can try whatever interventions it likes. It's mm. not going to work. We need city-led growth. That is the only way we're going to create jobs. And I think that job creation, local economic development go absolutely hand in hand with good services and clean, accountable administrations, mm. which is why where we govern, whether it's Midval here in Gauteng yes. or whether it's um, Koga municipality in the Eastern Cape or the city of Cape Town, mm. good, clean, accountable governance, clean audits means that Businesses want to relocate there. So we've seen places like Midvale, huge mm. factories like Heineken, many others coming there because they want to be a place where there's reliable services and good, clean, accountable governments. They're moving away from cities and towns like Lichtenberg in the Northwest mm. where the services are collapsing. Sure. So I think that there's a hand-in-hand a -hand relationship between good, clean, accountable government, service delivery and local economic development. Mm people will establish businesses where there's reliable services. Mm. And we're also having an, a big issue in our country of public transport. Mm. And your plan is to integrate metros to adopt a one-ticket system. I know mm. I, I work closely with the George municipality. Mm. They always share uh, how that system works well in mm. their municipality. Can you tell us how you are planning to roll this out in other mm. municipalities? Again, like, inf like electricity, this mm. is an area where municipalities are going to have to step assertively into it. Mm. We've got a fragmented approach at the moment. Transport is split between national, provincial and local. You're never going to get an integrated public transport system while that function is spread across three different spheres of government. Okay. So you've got to consolidate that sphere. I think municipal government is the best place to locate it because you, what you want is an integrated system where people can get on a taxi to get to a train, to get back onto a My City bus mm -hmm. and then to a taxi to, to their workplace, seamlessly with one ticket. You can't do that if the rail function sits with province, the spur net sits with national, and the buses sit with the city. Mm -hmm. And then the province is responsible for regulating the minibus taxis. Mm -hmm. It's a big, big mix up. So we're going to focus on streamlining it. And we believe that what you need to do is to create integrated centers where hubs where transport comes together, mm -hmm. people are able to seamlessly move out from that. And also making sure that it's safe. So trains aren't our function, it's a national government function, but in the Western Cape, the city of Cape Town, with a partnership with the provincial government, mm -hmm. the Western Cape provincial government, we had a huge problem with people not using trains because sure. they're being robbed and mm -hmm. mugged. We've put police officers now and security onto those trains to encourage people to still use the trains because they're still one of the most effective ways to move large numbers of people. And then making sure you've got things like Go George, mm. My City, the bus rapid transport system. Yeah. I was in Rustenburg three weeks ago. Kay. Their 2010 project is now sitting in 2021 and it's, there's not a single bus on the road. Wow. Um, you know, it's just, you've got to get uh, get those buses on the road and, and provide that service. Mm. And you've said, uh, Stian Hazen, that you will fight national government's attempt mm. to bring all the metropolis departments mm. into one central policing department. Why do you feel strongly about that? Because national policing is such a disaster. Mm. Uh, if you look at international best practice, local policing is what's used. Um, city police departments, um, provincial police departments or state police departments as mm. they call them and then you have your federal uh, police divisions when you devolve crime fighting to the lowest level you get people to understand the type of crime that's in their area and they're able to focus and target it a general sitting with all that brass on his shoulder in Pretoria has got no clue what the issues are on the ground in a place like Manenberg in the Western Cape or yeah. in rural Limpopo the more you localize policing, the more effective it is. Mm. If the National Police Service was working well, you know, maybe there would be a case to make, but it's a complete disaster. Crime goes up every year, gender-based sure. violence goes up every year. 
uh, the police to population ratio rises every year. Mm. Becky clearly and his team are unable to tackle crime effectively. Why would you take small centers of excellence like these metro police departments mm. and merge them with something that's not working? You'll end up with just one big thing that's mm. not working mm. rather than having uh, centers of excellence. Mm. And the whole country, without a doubt, is, is battling uh, when it comes to the issue of housing. Can you tell us your plans on how mm. you will fast track and end this backlog? Mm. Yeah, so the big demand for housing is in, is in urban areas, mm. well-located mm. urban areas, mm -hmm. where people are close to opportunities work opportunities. You don't want to build houses for people 30 kilometers away, 30, 40, 40, 50 kilometers away from the urban center. Mm, so you've got to focus on bringing people closer to the, s to the urban core. Mm. Because it's very expensive to roll services out further from the city, and also it's expensive then for those people to access economic opportunities. So you've got to densify around, the, around that urban core. So what we're looking at looking is finding well-located government-owned, state-owned land okay. in urban centers that are surplus to requirement where we can develop mixed-use developments. Now, it's no use building a housing development uh, if there are no jobs or other opportunities oh, there. So no. we would like a mixed-use development where there's work opportunities, mm -hmm. there's parks, there's recreational facilities, but also well-priced housing units so we can bring people who are poorer closer to the urban core of the city. We have to do this. If we don't do it, we're going to end up with massive land invasions, huge unrest. So I think there's an imperative on cities. And I'm disappointed to see some parties out there playing politics with this thing who don't accept that we've got to bring people closer to the city. Mm. It's the right thing to do. It is the economically um, sensible thing to do. And it absolutely is the right thing to do from a social justice perspective as well. We don't want dormitory townships where mm. people live far from the urban core and have got to spend 50 to 80 rand a day just getting to a work opportunity. Got to, cities are going to have to densify around that urban core. Mm. And it will be interesting to know how you would respond to those who may say that your party represents mainly the interest of white people. <laughs> well, I mean, that's obviously the, the perception that mm. our opponents put out mm -hmm. about us. But I think anybody looking at the DA, whether it's in Parliament or any of the councils, mm -hmm. looking at our top six, uh, most diverse top six, yeah. <laughs> Every other top six is virtually monochromatic. Ours represents all of South Africa. Um, I think that you'll see that we are a party that represents a true diversity. Um, the top six of the Freedom Front Plus and the top six of the EFF are all people of the same race mm. and often the same gender. And I think that, that uh, what the DA offers is something bigger than that. We're bringing South Africans together from different values, different backgrounds, different uh, religions around a common set of principles and values that we're able to then uh, protect together. So, you know, I think that they can do better. We've got to mm -hmm. grow our, um, our diversity even more because I think our diversity is our strength, mm -hmm. but we remain the most diverse political party in South Africa by a long way. Mm, and does the DA believe in vaccine mandates that will mm. require people to take uh, COVID-19 vaccine? Mm. Well, we don't believe government should be forcing people to, okay. to do that. I think that it's, if you look at the constitution, my viewpoint is mm -hmm. that it's up to a person, you know, bodily integrity. There are people who've got different religious beliefs, people who've got different cultural beliefs, people who don't want to take the vaccine. I'm an uh, inherent liberal and I believe in the individual's right to mm -hmm. choose. Uh, what they do, particularly over things that you know, you know, affect their body. Mm. And I think they should be allowed to make those decisions. But I'm fully in favor of vaccination. I've been vaccinated mm. and I would encourage as many South Africans as possible to get vaccinated. And I think government needs to spend a lot more time and money on encouraging people to do so rather than trying to wield a big stick. Because when you wield, as soon as you put, as you put out the big stick, mm. you're going to end up with a mass resistance. Rather, mm. let's spend the money on explaining to people why we've got to get out of these lockdowns. And the only way to do it is to get vaccinated. So that's why I was public about my vaccination. I've, I haven't suddenly turned into a magnetic <laughs> robot. I'm not speaking Russian <laughs> and I'm not rushing around buying Microsoft products. So you know, the, the vaccine is safe and yeah. I would encourage as many people as possible to yeah, get it. I'm also fully vaccinated. Mm. I'm still normal. Yeah. <laughs> and lastly, Mr. Uh, Stian Hazen, how would you mm. encourage now South Africans mm. who are reluctant to go out in numbers or mm. in, on November 1 to go and vote? Mm. Well, and I think that local governments are the elections are the most important actually because they affect your everyday life. The mm. moment you come out of your home, it's the road you are, are driving on, 
the tap you're turning open, the light switch you're putting on in your home, mm. all of that is affected by local government. You can't sit this one out uh, and expect things to change. If you're living in a place where you're not happy with the services, you've got to get out there and vote. It's not going to happen by magic. Uh, and wrong. the longer we keep poor performing governments in place, the more services are going to deteriorate. So people must be active citizens. It's only once every five years as a local government election. Mm. And this is important because you won't get another chance for the next five years. It's not like Morkel's where you get a two-year guarantee. <laughs> Here you've got to wait the five-year term mm. out before you can do anything about it. So you can stay as you are for the rest of your life or you can change to the DA, vote for a party that gets things done. It's got a track record of getting things mm. done. That was DA leader John Stienhazen in conversation with Polity about the DA manifesto.